exactly before Google Earth. This is, you know, how we did it, right? We had some air photos and we could travel with those in our laps. Um, but really the, the window seat was the Google Earth of, um, of wow. the past. Yeah. And we really, it's a, it's an amazing view. And this is really what got us started, um, thinking about, how we could use that window seat as a as a great way to get people engaged with uh, the geoscience. Well, I can't wait to. I got already downloaded the app. It's it's called. Is it only on uh, flyover co- co- country? Is it on both platforms or just? That's right, platforms? both Android and iOS. You can get. I can't wait to start. And well, let me see. You start the app. You're up in the, up in the sky. And does does the app follow you as you fly over stuff? Well, so ideally, you would load your path. Uh, before, while you're still on Wi-Fi on the ground, um, so what you would do is click on your uh, the city of your departure and your destination. You could also click on multiple cities. Say if you were taking a road trip or a hike, there's a mode for that as well. So not just for flying, but you would click on your departure airport and your arrival airport, and then say load path. Then the app will go out to um, a number of geoscience databases and pull down the information um, within sort of a strip of a couple hundred miles around your path, and then you can save that to your phone, and you have it offline um, without buying in-flight Wi-Fi or without having data. So how does it know where you are? It uses your GPS, which is completely legitimate in airplane mode. We get that question a lot. Wow. And, you know, So what are the easiest things to spot when you want to try this out first? I would say the easiest things to spot are man-made features, right? We see center point irrigation and cropland and dams, but, um, you know, and you can see what, what cities you're flying over. There are, of course, geologically a lot of fantastic things um, like volcanoes and glaciers and mountain ranges and huge rivers, um, but there are, some, there are some maybe more subtle things that mm-hmm. I think the app can tell you about. Um, I, of course, fly into, I'm, I live in Minneapolis and fly in there, in and out of there a lot, and I love thinking about, you know, when I when I get close to home and see all of those lakes and rivers and how, you know, 15,000 years ago, there was probably a half-mile thick sheet of ice on top of the region, and that's why all those lakes and rivers are here. Um, as the ice melted back, it left blocks of ice and gravel and dirt and garbage, and those finally melted out. And those are the thousands of lakes in in the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes region.